this is Jeff Harvey from Down Under Visa. We are Australian registered migration agents here in the Philippines, Manila, and we specialise in doing visas for couples. This is Australians who are involved with, married with, living with, etc. Primarily, uh, we deal with ladies from the Philippines. We've been based here for the last 15 years, um, but we also do partner visas and tourist visas, child visas, etc. We do for those who are involved with ladies from Thailand and from Vietnam and from Cambodia. Now, if you are interested in what we have to say here, then please do a free assessment. Cost you nothing, take you five minutes. Uh, you'll see the details at the end and uh, we'll have a look at your case and we will give you an honest assessment as to whether we can help you or not. Uh, we're always painfully honest, we're well known for that. Um, if we can help you, we'll tell you, we'll tell you how we can help you, tell you what the costs are, approximately how long it will take, etc. Okay? So, please enjoy. Okay, continuing on about partner visas. We've already explained in the other video what a partner visa is, who it's for. Okay? So, if you've fallen into those categories, and I assume you are ready, to commit to your sweetheart from the Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, wherever, uh, wherever you found her or him. All right, now, um, onshore partner visas. This is probably the most popular of the options. Some months we have more onshore, some months we have more offshore, which is a general rule. Most people choose onshore, they like the idea uh, what it means is that this is the one we apply for. Onshore means inside Australia. Offshore is migration speak for anywhere outside Australia, off the shores of Australia, okay? So onshore means the visa applicant is inside Australia, all right? He's there on a tourist visa. Firstly, you make, you make sure that that tourist visa doesn't have any restriction on it. It doesn't have a no further stay uh, condition on it, which stops us applying for any other visa. As long as it doesn't have that, then please understand there is nothing wrong with applying for a partner visa inside Australia. It is perfectly legal, it is perfectly lawful. Um, they cannot stop you from doing so as long as you meet those conditions of the partner visa and you lodge a valid application, then everything is fine. Can do that. All right. Now the only thing is I will warn you about is that well, one, for tourist visas, they're no guarantee. They are being a little. They're being harder. It's harder to get them these days. They're being particularly tough because they are getting a lot of people overstaying, using visas for the wrong purposes. It's something that they really, really hate. Is somebody abusing the system, and like they wary about people using tourist visas in order to overstay. They see it as a simple process. People come to Australia from poor countries, they work illegally, they overstay. Some of them stay there for years and quite often, well, they can't get legitimate work, so they get illegitimate work, meaning they, you know, prostitution and you know, various black market activities, drugs, etc., etc. So they don't want that, okay? So if you're wondering, why they're being so tough, why are they picking on us, why are they picking on whatever, they're not, they're not trying to pick on anybody, it's just, it, it does make it hard. Okay, so that's the first thing, need to qualify for that tourist visa, need to get that tourist visa. The other thing is, right, we apply for this within, uh, within a three month period. Don't bother asking, oh, can I get a one year visa, or can I get a six month tourist visa. Um, Oh, I won't say they never grant them, but I mean, it, it's incredibly difficult to, to, to get, especially, especially a 12 month visa. They have a particular thing about not wanting anybody spending too long in Australia on a visa. Now the point is, tourist visa is for somebody visiting. Now, I don't know about you, but I mean, I'd love to take a 12 month holiday somewhere. Wouldn't that be fabulous? Well, it doesn't happen and especially not for the poor folk from the Philippines or from Thailand or anywhere like that. It doesn't happen. 
Okay, so so realistically, you're looking at three months' stay. Now, in that three months, you need to finalise the partner visa application. In most cases, you need to organise a wedding, right? And that, and that isn't something you can do at the last minute. It takes you a month to get a marriage license alone. You've got to be able to book a, a marriage settlement. So these things have to be done before we lodge that application. But anyway, that's the idea. Applicant is in Australia is ready to lodge that partner visa application, we lodge it, okay? Now, no doubt you've heard about bridging visas, let's just explain very simply, a bridging visa is a bridge between two visas. Keeps the applicant lawful in Australia, they don't say illegal, for some reason uh, migration speaks as unlawful, so uh, unlawful non-resident, uh, nobody wants to be that because that leaves them liable for deportation. So a bridging visa stops that, all right? We lodge that partner visa. It doesn't, it, it takes a few months, you know, could be anywhere from two months to six months on average to be granted, all right? A bit, tourist visa runs out. Now we get that partner visa application lodged within that three months. Okay, stroke of midnight, three months after she arrives, tourist visa ends. Exactly at the same time, bang, the, the bridging visa cuts in. All right, so that starts automatically. We don't apply for that. That allows her to remain in Australia. Now, I'll just to give you an idea of some of the advantages of onshore partner visas, apart from the fact she, she can remain in Australia until they make a decision. Now, if, they, if they're going to grant, grant, then she gets a visa grant, she remains in Australia. If it gets refused, well then she's going to be given 28 days in which to leave the country or lodge an appeal if you think it was an unfair decision. But anyway, that's how that works. So she doesn't have to, they, they don't say, right, your visa's been granted now, out you go and come back in. She can remain there. So it's very comfortable. You can, basically, you can start living together like a normal couple instead of sitting around waiting for her to get a visa grant. She's there with you, which is fantastic. Now, once we lodge that application, she can apply for Medicare. Once the bridging visa starts, she can, she can work. All right? Okay. Now, uh, disadvantages, all right, you've got a certain amount of time to get everything done in. If you're not into rush jobs, if you're not into complications, and also the uncertainty of, of what if they don't, grant that tourist visa, which is a possibility, um, then it's not the visa for you, right? If you, you're not very good with your paperwork and, and you're extremely busy and you think there's no way I can finalise all this within three months, well then we look at an offshore option instead. So that's one of the disadvantages. Another disadvantage is if you include children in the application, okay, which you can do, all right, so they are also there in Australia with you. They must be in Australia. You can't... You need to be inside Australia to lodge this. So do they, All right? So they need to be there on tourist visas as well. Okay, disadvantage is that they are considered, from an education point of view, if they're school-aged kids, they're considered to be overseas students. The cost of putting an overseas student in a school, even a public school, um, is very, very expensive. So, whatever well, they're on that bridging visa and while well, they're on that tourist visa, so I mean, they could be six, nine months, they could be paying exorbitant rates uh, for school fees. So keep that in mind. If, if, if that is a concern of yours, then either don't look at the bridging, don't, sorry, don't look at an offshore uh, partner visa, uh, or you might want the children to arrive later on a different type of visa which we'll cover separately, okay? So that's the disadvantages. Advantage, yeah, you're going to be together sooner. So uh, um, please get an assessment. There's a link at the end of this video. Get an assessment, we'll assess your case and we will tell you whether we think that we can help